What is the best way to track conversions in Google Ads? I get this question all the time. Let's go inside Google Ads to answer your burning questions about conversion tracking. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales, bringing you more than a decade of Google Ads expertise. I worked at Google for six years, and now I'm a marketing coach, consultant, teacher, content creator, speaker, author, and podcast host. And now to our first Google Ads question about conversion tracking. Zeeshan on TikTok asks, what do you recommend for conversion tracking, GA4 or GTM? For those who don't know, GA4 stands for Google Analytics 4. That's the current version of Google Analytics. And GTM stands for Google Tag Manager. Okay, so here's the answer. Google Analytics is faster to set up conversion tracking, easier to set up conversion tracking, and you can DIY it with just a few YouTube tutorials if you're not sure how. Google Tag Manager is going to be more accurate with its conversion tracking. It lets you do a lot more things, track a lot of different things as conversions, and pass a lot more data to Google Ads. You're not going to have a conversion delay with Google Tag Manager the way you will with Google Analytics. But in order to use Google Tag Manager, you need to become an expert or hire an expert. And I will even admit, I tried oh, when I would manage Google Ads accounts for people. Of course, the number one issue was conversion tracking. I tried to become a Google Tag Manager expert, and I just gave up. That thing is so <laughs> complicated. I know enough to like understand what's going on in there, but you, you would not hire me to set up your GTM for you. So for most people, conversions imported from Google Analytics is perfectly sufficient. It's what I do in my own business when I run Google Ads with my own money. And for the vast majority of businesses I work with, uh, they use Google Analytics conversion tracking. They run Google Ads. It works great. Um, so if you have the capability to use Google Tag Manager, then yes, that's going to be better. But never let perfect get in the way of good enough. And Google Analytics is absolutely good enough. Do you want to come back to this topic later? Sign up for the Inside Google Ads newsletter on my website to get the transcript of this episode and future episodes delivered straight to your inbox. Simply follow the link in this episode description to sign up. It's completely free. Moving right along, Sana Suites on TikTok asks, how can I track conversions from Google when bookings are on court reserve, which is a third-party system? Okay, uh... First answer is you are SOL. <laughs> Not really, but that's what it's like when you're tracking conversions on some kind of third-party system. I see this in the event space, in the travel space, in the kind of spa space, right? People come to your website, but then you use a booking platform that's hosted on a different website, not owned by you. Makes things really complicated. Option one is to track button clicks. You can do this with Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or another tag system and track a conversion when someone clicks on the button to go to that third-party platform, to go book. So you won't know when someone completes the booking necessarily, but you will know when people come to your website from Google Ads, how many of them click the button to go do that next thing. And so that's probably the easiest way to implement it, fastest way to implement it is to track the button click or the link click. Um, if you do have analytics on that system, what you can do is use custom UTMs or a custom ads landing page to know exactly which visitors to your booking system came from ads. So for example, if your Google ads campaign goes to a specific landing page and the only way people go to that landing page um, is if they are from ads, and then that landing page has a unique link that takes you to a certain part of the booking system, right? You can track that connection there and know that if they came from that page, they had to have come from ads. Um, or maybe you don't do a custom landing page, but you put UTM parameters into the URL to your booking system. Again, this is only worth it if you can put analytics on that booking system and view those analytics. Uh, not all systems let you do that. Um, so you won't be able to send that data back to Google Ads. So Google Ads wouldn't be able to optimate, optimize based on it. But you'd at least know of the people who come to your booking system and then end up booking how many of them actually came from ads. Okay, option two is something called OCT, Offline Conversion Import. This is something that like the large businesses I worked with at Google would do, and it has to do with the GCLID. So what you can do is capture the GCLID, the Google Click ID, 
when someone clicks on a button to go to the next page. And then you can pass that through to your CRM. And then when you connect your CRM to Google Ads, you can then send the G clip back into Google Ads for accurate, timely conversion tracking. Now that last sentence or two sounded like total gibberish. Okay, just move on. Don't attempt this. It is quite difficult to implement. I would consider this advanced level. But if you're advanced level and you're like, huh, I never thought of using the G clip that way before, that is also an option. So to summarize, how can you track conversions when you're running Google ads to your website, but then the conversion happens on a third party system? Easiest way is going to be tracking clicks on that button to that system. And then if you have analytics on it using UTM, so you can at least understand what happens to those ad clickers uh, when they make it to your system. But it's complicated. It's absolutely compl complicated and it's not going to be perfect. That's kind of the downside to these third party systems makes it really easy for you to capture those appointments, those event bookings, those tickets, whatever it might be, but you don't get a lot of insight into it. And therefore your Google ads is not going to be able to optimize based on who converts and who doesn't. If you're enjoying this episode and you're thinking, hey, I've got a question for Jill too, then go ahead and follow me on your favorite social media platform. I'm active on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Threads right now. You can find me on all those platforms. The links are in the episode description and simply drop a comment on any of my posts. I respond to all my comments personally. That's not something I outsource to my assistant. And that's also where I source the topics we're going to cover on future episodes of Inside Google Ads. Our third question for today comes from Mike on TikTok. He says, I'm tracking the phone call buttons and most days I get 15 conversions a day, but no calls. Why? So basically his conversion action is a phone call and Google ads is saying he's getting about 15 conversions a day, but he's not actually getting any of those phone calls. Why? There's a few different reasons this could be happening. Fastest way, like how I would diagnose this if I was on a call with Mike, is to segment by conversion action. So when you're in your campaign view, you want to hit the segment button, choose conversion and then conversion action just to verify what's going on in the conversion column. I know you say you're tracking phone call buttons, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're actually tracking. What can also be helpful to do in tandem with this is to add a column to your report for all conversions. So there's hundreds of columns you can have in your Google Ads reporting. One is conversions and one is all conversions. The difference is conversion shows you how many conversions that campaign has gotten in the given time period for those conversions that the campaign is optimizing for, those primary conversion actions. Um, whereas all conversions will show you how many conversions you got for all the conversion actions available in the account. Let me give you a practical example. I'm gonna give you an e-commerce example just because it's a bit easier to understand than a phone call example. So let's say in your Google Ads account, you are tracking as conversions, add to cart, begin checkout and purchase. All those are being tracked. For your campaigns, you're just using purchase to optimize for. So your conversions column is just showing purchases. Your conversion value is just showing revenue, but the account is capturing those add to carts and begin checkouts. If you add the all conversions column, you'll be able to see not just how many purchases um, you're getting from those campaigns, but how many add to carts you're getting from those campaigns, how many begin checkouts you're getting from those campaigns. All of that will show in the all conversions column. So when you're trying to diagnose a conversion problem, it's helpful to look at the conversions and the all conversions columns to see if they're the same uh oh, or different. Um, and then to add that segment by conversion action to really analyze what's going on. So often just by doing those two things, adding the conversion action segment to your view and adding the column for all conversions, X conversions, you'll be able to spot what the issue is. It's usually some kind of settings issue or implementation issue, um, like you're tracking the wrong thing. But could be other reasons this is happening, that Google ads is saying there's a bunch of conversions and you're not getting any phone calls. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if it's a call from an ad, for example, if someone clicks to call you, that'll register as like they clicked on the phone call button, right? It doesn't actually call you. That pulls up their phone app on their phone with your number pre-populated. They still need to hit send. So it's unlikely that 15 times a day, people are clicking that, the phone number's coming up, and then they choose not to actually call you. But that 
could be a source of discrepancy, so important to mention. Um, there could be an issue with your phone number, um, whether you're using a Google forwarding number or not, something else to look into. Um, so again, lots of different ways this could be a problem here, but fastest way to diagnose is looking at conversions versus all conversions, segment by conversion action to double check what's actually being tracked there. So which is better for conversion tracking, GA4, GTM? Honestly, all that matters is that you are tracking conversions. As you saw with our question about the third-party booking system or our question about not getting any calls, conversion tracking issues are so, so common. I audit dozens of Google Ads accounts a year now, mostly for small businesses, and so many of them either aren't tracking conversions or they're double counting conversions, which is arguably worse, uh, or something is broken in the conversion tracking. And if your conversion data isn't accurate, not only do you not know what's going on with your ad investment, but Google also doesn't know what's going on with your ad investment and so can't optimize. I will be the first to tell you, I mentioned it earlier, I am not the foremost expert at conversion tracking implementation, okay? I'm great at spotting the issues, understanding what's wrong. I am not the person you go to to fix it. But I do have my go-to guy who is such a pro at this stuff, whether it's Google Analytics 4 or Google Tag Manager. I pull him in for all my clients whenever we need conversion tracking help. So if you've got a conversion tracking issue and you'd like an intro, I've dropped an inquiry link in the episode description here. So just shoot me a note via that link. Uh, let me know what the issue is, and I'd be happy to connect you to my guy. I'm Jill Saskin-Gales, and I'll see you next week inside Google Ads.